Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Can you say something? Can you hear me? Yes. And I'll turn you up a little bit more. And there we go. So it's doing this weird cropping bit, and I don't know why. I know. There we go. It's like every time OBS just doesn't, it doesn't remember. It just doesn't. It doesn't want yeah. to. Yeah, I know. You can't. You can't count on it. Nope. Do you, ever, do you ever get that where it's like you think it's set up and then you click the button that should show off a browser and it shows a completely different browser, a completely different window, and you're like, great. Yeah, yeah. No, now it, it does I've it all the time. I've shown everyone my passwords. <laughs> Luckily, I've, I've only, I think, I, I, I haven't had that problem yet. Not yet. But that's Just not to say. It's a matter of time. Yeah, it's only a matter of time, right? Doing yep. this for. And then boom, you got to come up with all new passwords. <laughs> or... I'm pretty creative with my passwords. I think I have several <laughs> going, so. Use a password manager. Yeah, I do. I do. That's what I have. His password is space123. So everybody <laughs> can hear him, right? <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> I think that's, that's a solid yes. So how is it going? I haven't talked to you since you've been back from from Costa Rica. From Costa Rica, yeah, yeah, uh, it's going great. Um, that was a super fun trip. I mean, Paul is a great guy to travel with. He and I really get along well. Yeah. Um, there's someone at the door. Hi. Hello. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. I'm doing the I'm doing the live stream now, so don't worry about it. <laughs> cleaners just showed up oh gotcha yeah that is the that is the uh the battle that we have every thursday is that oh show up i see i see on thursdays which is fine it's fine it's just twitch <laughs> hi i'm working it, it it's it, in that case it is kind of nice because it is more relaxed you know yeah yeah this no one's gonna watch this after yeah it's not like you put it out as a podcast or anything like right that. right i just put it on youtube but but that's i mean i'm not i'm not yeah I'm not a YouTuber, but yeah. you have a lot of great YouTube stuff, which is right behind I us. I just YouTubed like uh, an hour ago. Oh, I have so if you refreshed. refresh that page, oh, there should actually three. be a new video. So now we have three? Let's there see. It is. Yeah, this one. The Q&A. Yeah. yeah. I love the Q&As. <laughs> pretty funny, too. There's some funny questions in this one. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like we'll have to give that one bizarre. a listen. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, the Q&As are great, guys. You guys know I love Q&As, and his Q&As are wonderful. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Bill said, speaking of traveling with Dr. Paul, do you have a location for the viewing portion of the Star Party yet? I want to scout out. I want to scout for internet signals. No. I don't, yeah, I don't All we know so. is that it's happening. Right. That's it. That's as far as we've gotten is it is go. It is a go. Yeah. Yeah. And... So. The price has been reduced, mm -hmm. and there's I think there's still slots available, so you should definitely go to astrotours.co slash allstars, and you should be able to find out. She's got a link, of course. Oh, wait. No, I think I delete, deleted that. Com. Oops. Yeah, no, it's okay. That'll be easy to get back. It's on a timer, too, so I can literally copy and paste that. But It's just going to say that every every few minutes. Yeah. It'll is, just... it, is it pretty loud in the background? Can you hear uh -uh. Sort of all of the... The clanking no. and stuff going on? No, your noise gate's great. Okay, great. Well, then yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. Excellent. I've got people walking above me. Yeah, tearing my house apart. So, um, but man, that is like the greatest thing. I know. I know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I strongly recommend that to people as well, but then it makes yeah. it sound like first world problems, you know? It, it. I would be willing to give up any luxury to have this service. Yes. Yeah. In case like, people never don't know see another movie, about. don't have internet. Well, maybe not, but everything else. Yeah. No, it's so great. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it's not expensive compared mm -mm. to other things that you could spend money on. Exactly. I agree. Yeah. So talk about Costa Rica and you say you were traveling and it, you know, mm -hmm. he's, yeah, sorry. it was a, it's a beautiful place. Now, uh, I mean, we took a telescope and on the first night it was, uh, cloudy. The second night, it was clear, but really murky. But we we set up the telescope at the top of this great little hill and, and were able to see a bunch of the stuff, Orion Nebula, Pleiades, things like that, show people with the telescope. 
Then every single night after that, it was cloudy. Night after night after night after night of cloud. It was awful. Um, it was a beautiful place, and it's you know the sun was nice during the days, but then it, the clouds rolled in. And then on the last night, it was perfectly clear, in, but in the city, in San Jose. So we set up the telescope and saw the, um, saw the moon and Mars. And it was really cool to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it was wonderful. I, uh, it's, I mean, uh, Costa Rica is just one of the greatest places. It is this perfect mix of uh, um, safe and nature gone wild and you know just all kinds of crazy animals and birds and insects and plants and all of that and then at the same time there is like uh you know that you can drink the water from the tap nobody wants to sell you anything it's great i really love costa rica. i'm certain that i will be eventually spending a good chunk of my life in costa rica did Once, you guys zip line uh well zip lining happened i had already zip lined like we that's how we get around in canada is with with zip lines so uh, i didn't really need to uh so i went on the nice forest walk oh okay yeah been there done that yeah i've done like i said we all we <laughs> it's literally how we get around here on the west coast <laughs> right so uh, but yeah no, it was great great time and so i have agreed to lead the next iceland tour Oh, cool. It's going to be in spring 2020. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's so going to take some getting used to 2020. Yeah, I know. I know. Right. <laughs> um, but it is a phenomenal place. Uh, Iceland is, is wonderful. And it, like, if you want to see auroras, that's the place. Right. Sorry. That's definitely not the theme to Halloween. <laughs> is that your ringtone. Phone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's muted now. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> So, so what else? What else well, is going on? So there's a bunch of stuff going on. So we've got the EHT, right? Mm -hmm. And I, we were actually referencing your article. Well, on, on, not your article, but your, the article on your website. On Universe Today. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, we actually referenced that yesterday. So that's going to be really cool. I'm excited for that. It's just a matter of time before someone plagiarizes that article and makes a video out of it on oh, uh, on YouTube. Right, right. So so that was pretty funny, too. So yeah. you got accused of I, I do want people to hear this because my, my chat will think this is absolutely hilarious. Go on with the I story. Will, I, well, so it's in the new QA, but I will I will read out the I'll read out the comments so that you can you guys can hear it because it's yes. so funny. Uh, let me just find it here. <laughs> to have Susie. I know what this is. Oh, yeah, you guys will find it. I threw it out. It's great. Uh, okay. All right. <coughs> Apologies. Oh, you're fine. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, here it goes. It, goes. it says, wow, plagiarize much? This is word for word taken from this website, universetoday.com. Not cool. Create your own content. Cite your source if you're taking info from someone and don't regenerate the information you stole word for word. <laughs> you got phrasered. <laughs> I love it. So, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely <laughs> stole the content. Uh, the universe, actually, but it, really it's the opposite, right? In that the content that's on universe today is a is word for word stolen from the video. Right. It is the transcript of the video that I created. Right. Yeah. yeah. See, I told you guys would enjoy that. How dare you steal <laughs> yeah. your own content? I know that's I, next level, right? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> uh, so, no, it's true. Because, I mean, it's like, like all uh, new media evangelists, uh, you, you want to use, if you're going to create content on the internet, you want to use every part of the carcass. Right. And so I, I write my video. I then take the video. I take the script. I make that the article. I embed a bunch of pictures. I put the video back into it. Um, I post a version of it over onto my Instagram channel. We'll take snippets out of it and use it for other things. People memify it. So I, I, but it's, I mean, I mean, the fact that someone came to my defense, you know, is yeah. nice. Yeah. Right? yeah. Someone saw that, that a, a wrong was being done on the internet and they, and they fixed it. Yeah. I, 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 I you got to admire that instinct. Sure. Yeah. Someone just said beer back going to steal a beer from my fridge. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
Exactly. So, uh, but but hilarious. I mean, I did a tweet about this, whatever, a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. I just, the part that people thought was so funny was when I said that I got accused again of plagiarizing myself. Since then, I get every couple of weeks oh, someone man. someone yells at me. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny, and and a lot of the time I'll say like, check the name of the person over there, and they'll be like, oh, lol. <laughs> Right. Right. And then, and then we have a fun conversation about it and I gain a new subscriber and every mm -hmm. now and then someone is just in such a huff that they never come back. We never hear them again. <laughs> THX so. says I was just dropping by to tell Fraser to stop plagiarizing university. <laughs> today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Message received. <laughs> All right. I will stop. I will only create original content and then steal. No, wait. I don't, Wait. I don't understand how I can break I don't this Gordian your... knot. Right. <laughs> yeah. Can, you just need to not exist. That's that's apparently what needs to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, University Today, guys, is awesome. Uh, I someone asked yesterday what's a really great site to keep up with space news and University Today, and I said it might sound like I have some bias, but it I I referenced it all the time before I even knew you. Um, uh, cool. Well, you know, I did. I, we missed actually me celebrating my twentieth anniversary. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. So congratulations. I, I think I, I think I tweeted congrats to you. I Probably. Yeah. 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 So 20, 20 years. Uh, March twenty second, nineteen ninety nine is when I started up the, the site, and here we are twenty years later. Yeah. University newsletter is also great. Yeah. Cheers in the chat. Thanks. <laughs> University dot com slash newsletter. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the it. newsletter is the thing that I'm happiest with now, which was. I just sat and asked myself, what would be the best space newsletter? Right. What's a thing that you would get in your email box every week and be super glad to receive it? And yep. that is what I, and that's what I did. Yep. And you guys can sign up for that. When we watch his videos, yeah. you'll see at the very end there. Totally um, free. Yeah. You can sign you up. You will, however, that. occasionally have to hear about other projects that I'm working on. So that's the terrible price. Yeah, the other yeah. plagiarizing projects, you know. Yeah, my other plagiarizing <laughs> projects, exactly. Yeah. He even made himself look like Fraser. I, I know. know. I know. It's it's. I, I will go to no ends to carry out this, uh, to steal from Fraser. <laughs> it's so great. It's so yeah. awesome. But 20 yeah. years, that's a long time. And, and you've been doing yeah, this. Yeah, it, it is. And it's, I mean, it's, it's interesting to see, like, Every year that goes by, and I mean, you've got to have, you've got to feel the same thing too. That every year that goes by, you realize that you were terrible. Yeah. Uh, last year mm -hmm. and ten years ago, and whatever, right? And that you just feel your yourself getting better and better at what you do the more you practice. Right. And it's wonderful to to just have this level. I like like I, it definitely feels now that I have more and more just mastery and skill over over what I do which is which is great it feels it feels great and it just shows all you got to do is just grind at something for like 20 years just 20 years guys that's all that's all so you know don't it's just, like what I'm saying is be patient yeah for your dreams to come true yeah I think that's yeah. that's a huge takeaway because you know there's so many people are instant gratification nowadays if it doesn't yeah. happen now, then it's never going to happen. And eh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, feel free. Like, take five years to just hone your craft, and you'll yeah. be amazed at what you can accomplish and yeah. how much better you will get. How long have you been doing this for now? Oh, five wow. Years? Um, yeah, Ish. streaming about. Uh, gosh, let me see. And my brain is not working. Um, I've been partnered I take for it all two. Back. Yeah, I've been partnered for two. So the space right. content, I would say for two. Okay, perfect. So you yeah. just, yeah. So, I mean, I'll bet you if you go back and watch some of the stuff you did like a year ago. Oh man. Yeah. My first cringe. interview with Tabitha Boyajan of Tabby Star, I yep. was, I was sick. I was on, you know, a bunch of like cold medicine. Unlike now. Unlike now. I know I know yep. I'm sick now, but like I was so nervous and I had no idea how to have a conversation and, yep. and I got railed for that one. But, <clears throat> but yeah. again, you know, a learning lesson. Yeah. You just keep getting up. You just keep showing up again and taking another crack at it each time you get your, your wrist slapped, you, you learn your lesson yeah, and, uh, and you get there. And, yeah. and so I like, it's, it's just amazing. It's amazing. Like, like you don't need permission to do this work. Uh, and as long as you're willing to just keep showing up, 
uh, great things happen. Yeah, and, and I would say like the, the Partner Spotlight Week that we had around this time a year ago, if you remember that. Mm-hmm. Was that, that a year ago? Yeah, that was a year ago. Wow, okay. I know. And but that was a uh, that was intense, you know, but that was great, but that was so much you know, learning so fast and on the go. That yes. was that was insane. There was nothing like that. Um and for yeah. a lot of people they missed it, but um we had Fraser helped out a ton with getting people lined up that we had on here for a solid week. And there was days that I had four interviews with four yeah. different people back to back. Um, I believe we had one with the creator of Universe Sandbox. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dan uh, Dixon. Yeah, Dan Dixon. And I knew nothing really about him. And he's he was an awesome guy, super yeah. great. It was neat. I actually got a chance to hang out with Dan at a convention. And, and I just, he's just the greatest guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just we spent we actually spent like a lot of time talking about like how his company works. Like it's just like it's such a wonderful company. How he set it up, how it operates. Like it is, it is just like him and a, a fairly small group of people. He and they're just trying to do the best they can. And it's very independent. And yeah. it's really great to sort of hear that side of things. Yeah. Yeah. And even just to understand sort of way the way his brain works. You're just like, yeah. oh man, that's perfect. Yeah, he it, it was it was so funny because I didn't know that actually got set up while I was streaming and already in another interview, so I had to switch to that one um, super quick. But again, like these were great learning lessons. They were yeah. good with going with the flow, and everybody was very different. Um, and you know, Fraser and Dr. Paul, you know, they they we were like, let's make this a thing. Let's let's get them back on all the time because they're you guys are so well known and and you guys are just yep. awesome for. For discussing yeah, and anytime space you stuff. want to, you know, anytime you want more guests, I can line them up till the till forever. Yeah, which, no, I'm uh, thinking of getting Dr. Katie Mack back on here because people mm-hmm. have been going crazy about talking about the end of the universe. There was a cool she, video put out that people. Yeah, are really well, wanting. she's got a, her new book coming out right in 2020. And right, I think I've I've mentioned this in the past that whenever people have books, this is when they are, you know, easy prey for interviewing. Yeah. Yeah, like, and that's going to be a great example. Book. I'm just saying, I haven't lined this up yet, but this just came in. Is it the case for space? It's the case for space by Robert Zubrin. So thanks for sending me a copy of your book, Robert Zubrin. We <laughs> should talk. Yeah, fresh me for the grinder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, someone's asking, isn't that the Keating guy, the one that pushes creationism? I don't think so. Do you have a link? That, that's scary. <laughs> um, Brian Keating is the author. He works on the Bicep 2 collaboration. He's oh. the person who uh, announced, his team had announced the discovery of primordial gravitational waves. And then, and then the Planck mission overturned it and realized that it was just dust. Oh. And so he sort of explains how in gruesome detail they got it super wrong <laughs> and, oh. and how they messed it up. Yeah. He means so the I'm artist. To talking oh. to him about that. He meant the artist, I think. Someone said, oh, okay. Leo said that. But yeah. um, so that's going to be a, a really important interview. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be on, on Monday on my channel. On Monday? Yeah. Are you going to do it live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Monday, the open space thing that I do. Okay, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then... Uh, after that, so I just had Ian O'Neill, and then next week I think I've got, uh, oh, I forget who I have, but then I've got Jeff Nodkin. Oh, uh, George Dvorsky, who is the uh, space writer over at io9, mm-hmm. Gizmodo, and he's one of my favorite writers, so a chance to just pick his brain. And then I'm going to be talking to, um, yeah, uh, um, meteorite man, uh, Jeff Nodkin. Oh, you ever see the meteorite man. I've never meteorite uh-uh. men. Yeah, I, I'm clueless. No, okay, it's a show. It's a TV show about these people that go and and search for meteorites. That's why I probably don't know. I don't have TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's he's big on the internet, and he's just uh, great. Just a, like he's so he's just been uh, promoted to the president of oh man the National Space Association, and it's. And National Space Society. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool and, superhero uh, name. Yeah. 
Gizmodo. Um, but yeah, and so he is just a, just a wonderful guy and uh, really knowledgeable about space, about searching for meteorites, but also space policy and things like that. So I'm really looking forward to getting a chance to catch up with with Jeff Nockin. If you ever have a chance to interview him, he is uh, it's a real treat. Definitely. Yeah, I think I need to do way. more research on people out there because we. Yeah. I, I feel like I I just that's one area that I could improve upon. So. If all, if only you had a producer, I think that's the key is to have a producer, someone who can queue up all of these interviews for you. And then you just have to show up because we have the weekly space hangout crew for the show that we do every week. Mm -hmm. And so because of this community, everybody gets to be an executive producer. Right. Right. And right. so, and like, we mean it. Like if you join this community, if you like the show and there are guests that you want to bring onto the show, then, then go ahead invite them right and so every week i show up and um and i don't even know who we're going to be interviewing and sometimes it's like past nasa directors um amazing interviews yeah i i i definitely you know what i need is a website manager an seo person <laughs> that's 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 on my that's going to be something i have to find yeah <clears throat> i need a wordpress god yeah that's that's like half of the reason I went back and got my computer science degree was so that I could stay on top of all of the technical details of running a modern internet business. Because if you can't do this stuff yourself, you can't afford to hire someone to do it for you. So, Oh, this is that Prager U stuff. Have you heard about that? The Prager? Yeah. Prager, Prager. Yeah. Prager. That's the correct. Ooh. Isn't that? Yeah. Prager is you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've heard another streamer talking about how it's not a great resource. Uh, it's definitely not a great resource. Yeah, probably yeah. won't click that dance, but appreciate the link, but probably am staying away from that. I'm going to yep. stay away from that, actually. Yeah. Um, it's blatant disinformation. Misinformation. Misinformation. Yes. Disinformation sounds cool, too, though. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, it's like some kind of double speak from... Uh, yeah. Or yeah. Uh, is that Keating guy on it? It's that Keating guy on it. Yeah. So again, um, anybody that's probably involved in that, not not sure. Um, I'll take a look. Yeah. Thank you. So, so the HT thing's coming up, and also I heard that uh, people want to go to the like Pence said he wants to go to the moon in five years. <laughs> yeah and go to the moon go to the moon but we don't have a lander we don't have a bunch of stuff These right are details why do you have to be <laughs> such a contrarian going to the moon 2024 that's like five years right going to the moon mm -hmm. yeah like just we'll figure all that all, all that stuff later on right so how do you feel about this Going to the moon. What part of like, we are going to the moon. Humans are going to be setting foot on the moon. It's going to happen. I can't wait. I'm super excited. Do you think that's all really going to happen? No way. <laughs> do I think that's really going to happen? Um, now, do you like, the thing is, is like, I totally think that, that landing humans okay let me think all right so is it a good idea to land humans on the moon you know how i feel about this yes uh, meh like meh you know like whatever sure go fill your boots mm -hmm. with moon dust but but i would rather see some kind of sustainable method of keeping humans alive in weightlessness some right. kind of rotating cylinder that people are in, right right that's what i want right um so but still if you want to have a goal like go somewhere sure like go go to the moon go to mars whatever just like pick a place and just stick to it right so so the moon is fine because we've been just getting the flip-flop back and forth so so i think that's fine and and then so then the question is can the sls do it no way right the sls is not ready they're they're still not ready to even do their first tests of the SLS probably by 2021, and now it looks like there's other issues and delays coming up. So you're looking at 2022, 2023 for the first tests, and they're going to do tests. Like we are not talking about a lander; we are talking about humans getting into the Orion capsule and flying beyond right. low Earth orbit. Right. Yeah. Maybe recreating Apollo eight, right? Going out and around the moon and coming back. Like, but that's like probably not even that level yeah right so then okay um 
but to go through all of those parts. So then people are saying, well, could we use something else, right? What about using the Falcon Heavy? What about using a Delta Heavy? I mean, there are other vehicles that could, through orbital rendezvous, build this mission together. But then there's a lot of moving parts. Each one has enormous numbers of safety concerns. So there's like, if you drop everything, fund everything massively, focus right away on stabilizing Falcon Heavy, stabilizing on how you're going to do your mission so that things dock in space and then they go to the moon and then you've got a lander uh, that someone has built. Right. <laughs> you know, or you just like go and pull one of the old limbs off and put in some new computer computers and call it a day. Right. You know, go into the Air and Space Museum and just you know, take all the old limbs and, and just use them again. Um, which I maybe, maybe that's not a crazy idea. I don't know. Um, so, so there's a bunch of parts and I think that, and then what does that do? Right. That means that the deep space gateway is out the window. It means that, that all of your other plans, all of your, your, if you're going to go that route, then this, this space launch system is probably going to have to be put on hold. Like it's huge damage to the existing system, but but it's not that the existing system doesn't need to be damaged, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like I think anyone who, who looks at the space launch system sees it as a jobs creation program. It is a way to make sure that people in all the different states and all the different regions get to keep their jobs after the space shuttle program was shut down. Like it was a big part of that was let's make a new spaceship based on what we learned with the space shuttle. Let's keep all of those people employed mm -hmm. and not have to lose them to private industry like this and so that we don't have angry voters in all of these different states who are going to vote out us as congress people right right so i think the sls as is for in has been a rocket really without a goal and right. so the, the writing has been on the wall for a long time that this is that there would eventually be a reckoning and and we have reached the reckoning we've reached and, it yeah i think so and so now people are having to just of course boeing right as as part of the team that's working on the sls is having to to deal with this at a time when they're already dealing with a bunch of other issues like the 737 max 8 uh it looks like now the starliner has been pushed back to 2020 like yep. there won't be humans launching so it's an unprecedented opportunity for spacex Right, the Fal Musk has been trying to make the Falcon Heavy human rated so that it can send people to to the moon for uh, for part of its time. Right, mm -hmm. it's been always been their plan to make the Falcon Heavy a human rated spaceship. Uh, and now, I mean, I, we're not ready with Starship yet, but if they just gave Starship the time to be constructed and actually go through its tests, we you know we saw the first hop test today, right. yesterday, right? right? First hop test, we're going to see probably bigger hop tests. Then we're going to see a prototype sometime later on this year. Then we're going to see the full stack, Super Heavy and Starship sometime next year. One of the things that the Starship can do just on its own as a, as a mission is fly to the moon and land and then fly home. Mm -hmm. so, so there are alternative paths that could do this. They're actually very exciting. But, but the challenge is going to be you've got all the money that's already being spent on the SLS system, you've got a lack of funding that's going into the rest of these programs, a ton of just little projects all through the, the as we said, the lamb, the, the, the bathroom, the, right. the, all of the pieces, right? That has humans get to the moon, land, st set foot on it, survive, return home, uh, also survive. And so that's, that, that's where I think we're at right now is that we, is that this is a wake up call for the existing aerospace firms that they have dropped the ball. Right. And, and, and I think everyone has said this, everyone has known this, everyone has felt this. Right. And I think now it's time for, as we said, the writing, writing is on the wall. And so for them to get through this process, the next couple of years uh, unscathed is unlikely. It is an enormous opportunity for SpaceX to jump yep. even farther ahead of all of their competition because now you know he can say we'll take you to the moon on a falcon heavy and it'll, it'll and it'll work within budget just let's go right exactly right? 
and for yep. them to do it. And But to do so, they're going to have to piss off all of those Congress people who have been trying to keep the various parts of the space launch system in the traditional way it's going. So, yep. so it's going to get ugly or it's not going to happen. Or it's right? not going to happen. Yep. Yeah. Pretty and, much. And in general, it tends to not get ugly, right? Politics yeah. is all about compromises. Politics is all about things um, sort of settling back to a level of mediocrity. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're going to see is we're going to see things just kind of muddle back to, well, it turns out it was a little harder than we thought. And we're going to take a little more time. We're going to right. do these other studies and we're going to explore these other missions. And the, the, the deep space gateway is back on and it'll be probably business as usual. If I was to sort of just guess what I yeah. think is going to happen. No, I don't think there'll be humans. Although the Chinese might land on 2020, you know, by yeah. 2024, yeah. but I don't see NASA doing it. And, and it's not that it's impossible. It's just that it requires a certain level of political will and vision and just agreement right. of a whole bunch of people all coming together and going, yeah, let's totally do it. Let's, yeah. let's all work together and make it happen. So that's, that's how I feel like it's going to play out. And I think we are going to, but we are definitely going to see, it's going to get weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to get super weird. And I think the, the, the person who walks away with the prize is going to be Elon Musk and and Jeff Bezos. Yep. If, if they he can get the if they can get the the new Glenn launching as quickly as they think. Agreed. So there was a few questions that did come in. So sure. guys, I'm I'm scrolling up so you don't. You just got to stop me from talking. Yeah. No, no, no. That was great because get I did it. want to know your opinion. Like when I was reading about that. Um... I automatically thought, like, I wonder what he thinks about this. Yeah, um, that's what I think. I think, man, it would, it would be awesome, but it's also not really that important to me. And right. I'm really interested in seeing, but it's it's going to be just to get to that place that it's even possible is going to require a level of disruption that the aerospace industry has never demonstrated before. Right. Or so, the U.S. political system. So. So yeah, so Starchild says, why do you think they want to go back to the moon and not focus on Mars? Do you think that the moon going to the moon will make going to Mars at some point in the future easier? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, there are people like Robert Zubrin who think that going straight to Mars is the way you do it, or Elon Musk, although Elon Musk has been backing away from that and pushing towards the moon more recently, although now it really feels like he had advanced knowledge that the White House administration was going to start changing their position. And so he got ahead of the, of this policy change, which is again, you know, kudos to Musk. Um, yeah. The moon is close. The moon, you know, if, if they run out of toilet paper, you can get them toilet paper in two days. Mars is far. Yeah. No matter what you do, you are six months to Mars. If you want to just land on Mars for a month, then it's a one year trip. And if you want to do a, or it's going to be about a three year trip, you have to go through the radiation of deep space for months on end. And then you have to be exposed to uh, radiation on the surface of Mars while you try to find a good la uh, lava tube to dig Right, in to crawl in into. So, yeah, yeah, right. So Mars is far and just like if anything goes wrong, if, if you forgot, like have you ever gone hiking and you're like, oh, I forgot a can opener? Yeah, I and forgot my water up. bottle. I forgot my water bottle, right? <laughs> and then you're just like, well, this, you know, that's it. Eight months, right? there if, you go. Yeah, and if you were far away, then you'd be dead. Right. So yeah. um, it, so there's just like, we need to, Mars is this place where you've got to be really careful about how you do it. And you've got to build up that infrastructure before you even set foot on Mars. You've got to send spacecraft after spacecraft mm -hmm. and that they're filled with cargo and supplies and you know they landed and making fuel works and making structures out of the regolith works and you, your methods of protecting from the radiation all work. Right. And you're fairly certain that that humans can survive in for long periods of time in 38% gravity. So that is the challenge. And so the moon just makes, uh, just makes so much more sense just because it's close. Like it's close. all things being equal, the moon is close. The moon sucks, but the moon is close and, and close is what you need to test things out. I mean, think about it from a computer programming standpoint, right? Right. You, you, you compile 
as often as you can. You mm-hmm. build and compile your software project as often as you can. You don't go build it and then wait and for forever to compile it time, right <laughs> that <would> be <laughs> that's a good way broken. of putting it <laughs> yeah yeah and so you know i don't know about you but like whenever i'm working on software i'm like you know oh add yeah a line of code compile compile yeah does it work add exactly. a line of code compile does it work yep right yeah. yeah so that's that's the way unless you like hours of debugging i i mean yeah yeah um, maybe so someone says, uh, be, be more worried about the chlorate. Yeah, the chlorate, so toxic soil, you can clean soil. Yeah, you just wash it. You can clean it. Yeah. I mean, it is a, it is a pain in the butt, but you can clean it. So, yeah. um, but there was, someone asked, what, what's your opinion on SpaceX? Uh, whoa, um, I don't Do know. Do you it's like awesome. them? Uh, yeah, I love SpaceX. Who doesn't? What kind of monster doesn't love SpaceX? It's like, I don't It'd know. It'd be pretty like weird. Eating a kitten, right? Mm-hmm. Big eyes. <laughs> like a lemur. Um, yeah, I mean, the things like, like go ahead. If you, if you feel like, what are the feelings that people have about SpaceX? They can feel like Elon Musk is, says more than he's actually able to accomplish. And then you just watch the twin rockets landing side by side. You know, I, I really, I'm going to put this on a loop somewhere. I'm going to like have a screen that all it does is just shows the twin Falcon heavy rockets yes. landing side by side. Yeah. And then you're just like, and that is a saved booster rocket that then has gone on to be used on another mission. Mm-hmm. And now the, the new Falcon, the regular Falcon nines just get reused over and over and over again with the design of the new starship. Every part of the starship is going to be, it, the thing is just going to be reused with no downtime and it's going to make its fuel right out of the air yeah with with electric energy so it is a, a stunning accomplishment if it can actually happen but things take longer than than people are anticipating but i think people miss this whole point that that musk goes after very uh optimistic timelines but then delivers. Yeah, the Model 3 took longer from Tesla to launch, but then it came out, and now it's like the best-selling electric car. Yeah. And, and it didn't come out at $35,000 until now it is. Right. Right? Yeah, and no, so, I think he's optimistic and, and very yeah. aggressive with that, but, but yeah. he still does deliver. Right. It just takes longer. It just takes and a little so bit longer. Yeah, and so like, do I think that... like? They were planning to send their first starship to Mars in 2022. Do I think they will? No, I don't think they will. Right. But but if they sent it in 2032, that would be amazing. Yeah. Right. So so take an extra 10 years, Musk. Yeah. And the fact that that the Falcon Heavy was developed without any government spending, it was done as a project based mm-hmm. on profits they had made from other parts of the company. So. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the Starship, like they're building it without even a customer who they know is going to do this. So I think that um, I don't mind that things take longer. I always roll my eyes when I hear some kind of deadline, but you know, whatever, what are you going to do? So that's how I feel about SpaceX. Uh, To have asked, what's up with the Virgin Galactic? Is that just for sightseeing? Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, uh, it's for rich people to fly to space and see the curvature of the Earth. It's a way for flat Earthers to have their disbelief disproven. Oh man, uh, we need to get Eddie Bravo on that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> put one after the other. I, of course, maybe it's the way the flat Earthers will, you know, get free trips to uh, to space. Yeah, but yeah, it's going to be a method of space tourism. But Virgin Galactic also has a commercial launch wing as well that they're going to be moving into, where they're going to be launching. Uh, rockets from aircraft so you can see a little bit of learning but i think that that virgin galactic is kind of a dead-end technology Mm -hmm. can spacex start commercial humans on starship without human rating uh yes sure yeah um right the human rating is nasa's human rating so nasa isn't going to put any of their astronauts on a spacex starship but if spacex can can show that their spacecraft in their mind is human rated 
right? It doesn't have to meet NASA's qualifications. It just has to meet whatever the TSA. I'm not sure who, you know, right. the, who would be, who would be the, the flight, I mean, FAA. So if the FAA approves of the starship, then people are, humans are good to go. Yeah. So it's just that NASA has, you know, and they've gone through some terrible accidents. So NASA is very gun shy about human beings on, on exploding rockets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, free space trips. Okay. Then the moon is a projection. I know I was just about to say, uh, flat earth. Yep. Um, hopefully the sec doesn't have to approve of anything. Well, um, SpaceX is a private company and Musk has said that he'll never take it public. So the SEC has no real involvement in what they do while Tesla is a public company. And so every Harambe rap song that Musk uh, wants to perform <laughs> needs to be uh, carefully looked at by, <laughs> uh, by the SEC. Yes, yes. Um... Next Falcon Heavy in three days, by the way. Yeah, yep. right? Let's see the second one. And mm -hmm. then the third one. And then, and I will replace my <laughs> looping video of rockets landing with the, <laughs> the new one, if the central booster will land. Uh, there is a few other questions, too, and I'm scrolling up to get those. Bill Nash has a great point. Uh, he likes to think that Virgin Galactic is chasing an incremental approach to getting into real orbit. It will be the first to offer a viable platform once the Saber engines are viable. Um, maybe, um, but but that's a just a completely different technology. Mm -hmm. So it's a it launches from the ground, it flies through the air with an air breathing engine, switches to rocket when it reaches a high enough altitude and goes off into space. So it's it's kind of a different technology. And Chef made or makes a comment saying, in my opinion, I think the James Webb will be po will possibly never happen. Too many oh, nations want rights don't, to it. Don't. Well, I don't know what that means. James Webb is is a NASA telescope that's launching on a European rocket in 2021. Mm -hmm. So it's done tested next step is for it to get on a boat and go down to South America for its launch. So I can't imagine, you know, that that's, that ship has almost sailed. So I can't imagine, uh, you know, any other complexities coming up. The complexities are the rocket could explode. Yeah. Right. And once it's in space, it will have its time broken up in the way that the Hubble Space Telescope does, which is you propose really interesting science and they will let you use their telescope. Yeah, I think there is going to be a conference, but I'm not finding it right now where they were going to talk about this. And I believe it was going to be um, regarding the James Webb. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's supposed to take flight in 2016. Yeah, no, no, I understand that 2021 is a, uh, again, an aspirational timeline. Mm -hmm. I just keep telling people it's going to launch in the year 3000 just to mm -hmm. be safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys don't ever catch that. He always, we always just throw different dates out yeah, there. Yeah, we just throw a different date, mm -hmm. year 4000. Yep, year 4000. It was supposed to take flight in 2016, Fraser. Come on. Wait, yeah. with, with even the James earlier Webb? than that. It was even earlier was than that. Be, yeah. Yeah, 2007. 2009? Yeah, 2007. No, 2007, I think, was originally yeah. when it was supposed to. Has it, has it been changed to 2022 officially? I haven't heard that. Yeah, I don't. Um, I haven't heard that either. I've, I've heard spring 2021. Yeah. I know that there was going to be March 30th, 2021. Yeah. I don't think that that's. Yeah. I think there was supposed to be a conference, but I'm not sure when I read this the other day. Um, I'll have to find it again. Um, I'll probably find it after. Yeah, I haven't seen any any push. Again, just don't just don't think about the dates. Just the yeah. year three thousand. You'll just drive yourself crazy. Yeah, no, it's it's. I haven't heard a twenty twenty two pushback, and I'm I'm looking all over. Um, but yeah, updated schedule for because I know that they were saying something along the lines of that they were. They gave a timeline, and 
things have taken a little bit longer than they anticipated. So that's pretty common. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like expect this. That's why I always get people, it, it, I feel like I'm killing their hopes and dreams, but I feel like with the James Webb Space Telescope, it's better to just not have any expectations. <laughs> You're not responsible. <coughs> yeah. It's a Northrop Grumman right. problem. Right. You are not the CEO of Northrop Grumman. No. Oh, man. <laughs> um, has anything ever went faster than expected? Well, some people, someone made the, the comparison of the Hubble Space Telescope, and the Hubble wasn't this delayed. I think this yes, is... Yes, it was. Well, okay, so it depends on where you start, actually, right? So have things... Things have gone as fast as expected? Well, so with the Hubble, it depends on where they're actually talking about it from it being built. I guess I was talking about from the point of being built. Not they the started working on Hubble in the 1970s. Wasn't that when they were pitching the idea and then they finally got the funding? They worked on it in the 70s, but then it actually did... Then they had the Challenger problems, the Challenger and the Columbia, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what impact those had on it, but, but, but no, I mean, there have been plenty of missions that have come in on budget and on time. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, people are bringing in the Voyagers, uh, there's a bunch, um, the tests, lots of missions, uh, curiosity did well. Um, the reality is, is that actually NASA itself internally is very good at building missions on time and on budget. It's when they involve outside contractors, yep. especially some of the larger aerospace firms, that some of the budgets have, have slipped. Some of the, the timelines have slipped. Yeah, I think we're approaching that $10 billion mark with, with James Webb. I think it's yeah, last I checked, yeah, it was like 9.8 or something. We billion, and we're still waiting for, for them to, to, to cross that. And so this is, again, back to that idea that the, the writing's a bit on the wall, that, you know, I mean, I would love to spend some time and talk to ULA's Tori oh, yeah. Bruno because he's really engaged with, the, you know, with people in the public on Twitter and stuff. Great guy to talk to and just get a sense of, of where they stand in competing with, with SpaceX moving forward, right? Right mm -hmm. now, they're still launching a lot of NASA stuff. Uh, the Parker Solar Probe went on a Delta IV heavy Right. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of still missions in the timelines that are going to be using United Launch Alliance mm -hmm. at the same time. SpaceX is making it really hard to resist the the savings. Yeah. Uh, time to sack all subcontractors. <laughs> um, Hubble was delayed about four or five years, then launched. I know that the uh, yeah, I think it one of the. Um, tragedies that happened. I think it was the Challenger. Kind of delayed a little bit. Kind of paused it a little bit. Yeah, but. and one of those, I think it was the Challenger actually, they forced them to completely redo the way they were sending the yeah. Galileo spacecraft to Jupiter. Mm -hmm. So they were originally going to have it launch from the shuttle with a really powerful set upper stage. Yeah. And then they had to change the the system because they weren't able to put that powerful of a rocket inside the space shuttle. So they'd use a bunch of uh, flybys, gravitational slingshots. Yeah. And you guys recently um, on university wrote something about the Clipper mission, didn't you? Or am I making uh, that up in my head? It's No, I think we did. Um, I mean, we've talked about the Clipper quite a bit. Yeah, I but a... I think recently um, people have been talking about that in here, wondering why we're not landing robots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Clipper is going to be the one, and it will have the last time we knew the budget, it was going to have a lander. Right, right. Because they, they've been doing updates with it, right? They're, they're replacing certain parts or they're adding certain parts? Um, well, I mean, the, so there had originally, there was going to be a lander on the Europa Clipper. And right. then it got axed. Right. And now it's been put back in. Which is great. That was oh, neat. Oh, yeah. A lander on Europa? <laughs> yes, please. Yes, yes. And, and that probably would include something like uh, some kind of drill, maybe? Uh, I, I mean, maybe some maybe. kind of ice scraper. Yeah, I don't know, something. Like, I don't know what they're going to do beyond land. I mean, it can't be that complicated, right? Right. And, and I mean, that would be shot. amazing, right? I mean, yeah. even if you just scrape the ice, you can get so much information just from that. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, uh, Shizad Dizu asks, what's the NASA ETA on the Dyson Sphere? I think it's behind schedule. <laughs> Dyson Sphere has already began, right? It's already begun. Uh, when you think about all of these spacecraft that are up there with solar power, they're part of the Dyson Sphere. 
Just not the way that you guys, not the way the internet portrays that. What, what is your definition of a Dyson sphere, right? Tin You're foil capturing hats. the sunlight. The, You're right, right, up a right. Spacecraft. It is capturing sunlight. Right, but they're not you're thinking that. And using it for your, you know, your spacecraft. And done. <laughs> like it, it fulfills all of those requirements. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm meaning like where people think that we're actually going to build something around the sun. We have <laughs> something. All, again, we have already begun. Think about the, um, the SDO missions, right? One oh, is yeah. ahead of us in, in Earth orbit. One is behind us in Earth orbit. They are orbiting the sun. They mm -hmm. are solar powered. They are gathering power from the sun. The Dyson sphere has begun. <laughs> a sphere made by Dyson. I'm pretty yeah. sure Dyson sphere is the circular part of the vacuum cleaner. It is where the ball is, right? I don't know which. Isn't it the whole thing? <laughs> it is. <laughs> that's oh, only one. Dyson? That's that's the, their, their selling point. Yeah. But also, Doctor Paul did say that on the on the, the All-Stars trip that we are going to have to have the, the Fermi Paradox debate between you two. Again? Yeah, he said yeah. that I have to moderate it, but I'm not going to come up with questions. I'm just going to sit there and pick at <laughs> points that I know you guys will, will answer. Yeah. And, you yeah, know. We, we just keep rehashing that uh, disagreement. Although I, he just keeps getting closer and closer <laughs> to me. So I think at, at a certain point, uh, we'll just agree. <laughs> yeah, keeps... you heard her here first. We are moving up the Kardashev scale. Totally. Yeah. So did did you did you guys manage to do any kind of live streams while you were there? Uh, we didn't do any live streams, but we did a record a bunch of shows while we were there. Yeah. Is that on his channel? Some are on his channel. Some we did. We pushed an episode of uh, Astronomy Cast where we talked about dust, and oh. he and I talked about that. Um, and then we did an episode on his channel where I we talked about why the universe didn't just turn back into a black hole. Um, wouldn't you like to know? You're gonna have to go and check out his his uh, episode. Well, we got we have so many now to check out. Yeah, and then we just did a bunch of live shows where we just we, like I said, this 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 thing that Paul and I do where we debate the um, uh, where we debate the Fermi paradox. But the problem is, is that we are agreeing more and more every day, so it's getting harder and harder. Like he and I completely agree on human space exploration right um a bunch of other things we're we're in 100 percent agreement mm -hmm. so it's getting harder and harder to debate yeah and, and and that's basically i always get these so confused that's where where a life could have existed but the distances between two places right like it's like so the great Fermi paradox yeah or is that the great filter God, I always forget these. Well, so, no, the Fermi paradox is just where are all the aliens? Right. But that, the what if they're really far away? Well, okay, here we go. <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> right. So, so the, I mean, the, the, the whole point is that the universe is big and the universe is old. And life evolved on Earth as quickly as really it could have. Life right. arrived on Earth as quickly as possible. And so, and Earth is by no means showed up at the beginning of the universe's age. And so there have been billions and billions of years that there sh could have been life on any world. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the first thing to say is that it seems incomprehensible that the earth is the first place for life to form. Right. So the second thing to say is that the future of civilizations like us is to explore the Milky Way mm -hmm. or explore their galaxy, that we are right around the corner at this point from building self-replicating robot probes that we can send to other star systems that will build more copies of themselves and go out to more worlds and build more copies of themselves and go to other worlds. And the analogy that I always use is it's like a sandwich. You take a sandwich and you drop a little piece of mold on it, come back a week later, doesn't matter where you started the mold, the whole sandwich is covered in mold. Mm -hmm. So it would take you know, the robotic exploration of the Milky Way about um, 10 million years to to explore the entire Milky Way, no matter where you started. Life, you know, 100 to 400 billion stars, life could start on any one planet in the entire Milky Way. And 10 million years later, life would be, or the robots would have traveled to every single star in the entire milky way 400 million 400 billion stars mm -hmm. right doesn't matter where you start 
Right. And, so, and, and that, and then you think about that 10 million year period, it has happened many, 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 many times. Right. Right. So the question then is, where are all the aliens? This is the this was this was sort of the conclusion that that Fermi and Enrico Fermi and his friends had was to say they they got to that right. The universe is big. The universe is old. It's relatively straightforward to explore the Milky Way to colonize the entire Milky Way. Nothing in the laws of physics prevents it. So the question is, where are all the aliens? And the great filter is one of those answers. And you, you, I'm sure you're coming up with a whole bunch of off the cuff responses <laughs> to the Fermi paradox. And I guarantee I have heard them all before and I will smash them. Uh, I need, I gladly. actually don't have a real position on it. <laughs> well, it's, right. And so, I mean, generally people are, people go with, they don't want to, mm -hmm. right? Well, maybe aliens don't want to explore the Milky Way. Well, Maybe some don't and they're out, but others do, right? Like it has to be none. And we're an example of a species that thinks it, why we could, we should. Right. Right. So, so we're an example of one that, so that idea is right out right away. So right? do people Go. have, so yes, yeah, so that'd be one where they would say like, well, maybe the aliens are super intelligent and then mm -hmm. they saw earth. You know, before yeah. even having to go there, and they're like, "Yeah, no, not that one, though. No. We'll we'll skip over that one. We'll go sure. to yeah." And so that's that's called the cosmic zoo hypothesis. Oh. The idea that 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 we're in some kind of zoo that we are the aliens are leaving us alone, and they are uh, making sure that we proceed among our normal uh, technological path. But again, that is that is assuming that they're all going to work in in this perfect agreement. When we would assume that some aliens would want to talk to us, and other aliens would want to stay away from us, right? And so, four hundred billion stars out there, you would expect that one of them would go. I'm just going to tell them that they're not alone, because it's so sad. They think they're alone. <laughs> so. So that's, so either, and so most of these arguments have to be all the aliens in the entire Milky Way work as one perfect union. Um, and that seems hard to believe. Right, right. So, that's called so the cosmic So the other kazoo? argument that people have is that they can't, that you just, you can't do it. And yet oh. a rock just got here from another star system. Right. Right, Oumuamua. So if a rock can do it, you would think that that an advanced technological civilization could do it. Mm -hmm. So, so again, the, the presence of rocks from other star systems means that that the journeys are not too great, and it should be possible. Was you said it was called the cosmic kazoo, though? That's what it's called. No, cosmic <laughs> cosmic zoo. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that we are in a zoo. It's called the zoo hypothesis. Oh wow, that's yeah. Okay, so I wasn't gonna, you know. Yeah. And so the and so the argument and Paul agrees with all of those, right? Mm -hmm. Like where the argument comes down to is, I think that we are uh, the we are the first intelligent civilization in the observable universe, and Paul thinks that's that's crazy for we, us to be the first. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, time is time is also a thing, though, and that that goes in with the the great filter, mm -hmm. right? That maybe they already yeah, lived so the, in their so dead. The great filter is is an explanation for why we could be the only intelligent civilization in the observable universe. That something bad happens to every intelligent civilization when it reaches a certain point of its um, uh, of its evolution. Ah, uh, gotcha. Right, and so that thing could be like you get to a point where you discover how to make a starship work, and your first starship destroys your star system. Oh yikes! Yeah, <laughs> and so and the and the but the trick with the great filter is that whatever this technology is, it has to work one hundred percent of the time. It is unavoidable, inescapable. There's there is no way to not with technology destroy your entire civilization and we can think of things that could cause it right like we can think about like i don't know like global warming but global warming could be avoided right we can avoid global warming if we wanted to mm -hmm. 
um, an asteroid strike. Well, we don't, you know, asteroid strikes are actually pretty rare. Mm -hmm. um, a global, you know, an AI revolution. Well, the AIs would go to space. So where are all the alien robots? We know that the Great Filter won't be an AI um, revolution. Uh, pandemic, that could be avoided, right? Right. So it's, it's likely that whatever is the Great Filter is a thing that we can't imagine that it will show up instantaneously and we, no one will have predicted it and it will be 100% lethal to the civilization that uh, crafts it. And all of them do. So. Okay. That's no, the great filter. That's the great filter. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, there is one. We'll do one last question. I got, I got a little more time today. Oh, you do? We, okay. We, we, yeah, we haven't hung up for a long time. So we haven't. Good. If, let's give people, uh, you know, more of a, a little more time. Okay. So Bill Nash, I'm going to ask that question after I, I deter a little bit because I do want to hear that too. Um, someone said explanation of voids. Do you have an explanation for, for, for cosmic guessing, voids? I guess. I'm yeah, thinking. cosmic voids are just the, are the in-between parts of galaxies. So galaxies are, uh, when you grab dough, like, pizza dough mm -hmm. and you pull it apart mm -hmm. it gets stretchy and eventually holes open up as you're pulling the dough because you're trying to make a finite volume a finite flat surface get bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually it doesn't have enough volume to be able to handle the size that you're trying to make it and so these gaps open up you get these little bubbles you get these little bubbles and all they are is not dough Right. There's nothing special. They're just the places where there's not dough. Yeah. And I mean, there still is stuff, but just not nearly less as stuff. much. Just, yeah, less yeah. stuff. And so over time, what's happening is, is it, it's a concentration. The, mm -hmm. the places where there is stuff is accumulating more stuff because of its mutual gravity. And the places that are less stuff are getting the stuff taken away from them by yep. the places with the more stuff. And so you're just getting over time bigger and bigger voids in the middle of more and more concentrated space. Yeah, I think people like to make voids sound super cool because, yeah. you know, dark abyss type yeah, thing. Yeah, so it's just less less density. Yes, yes. Uh, do you know NASA would even let the general public know if we attached a sat cube or some other form of robotic form to a rock passing through our solar system and traveling to another? Oh, um, NASA secrecy, basically. NASA secrecy. Well, so here's the thing, right? If you can, if you can, if you can attach, if you can reach the velocity of, say, Oumuamua as it is leaving the solar system, then you don't need to attach a spacecraft to Oumuamua because you now have the same trajectory as the rock. Mm -hmm. So, if you can demonstrate that you can reach the same trajectory as Oumuamua, then you don't need to. Now, there's reasons you'd want to go there because you want to study it, but you don't need its help as a to take a ride with it. Right. So he's saying, do you like think NASA analyze. would let us know, though? Do you think NASA would inform the public if they did do something like that? You, they would not shut up about it. Yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> <laughs> they would never stop talking about it. It's like they do right now. Did you see that they used a laser to map every square centimeter of uh, asteroid Bennu? Yeah. And they yep. just released a book letting us know all of the cool things that NASA has done, um, all of the cool spinoffs for 2019. No, NASA, a lot of the time, dumps all of the raw data from all of their spacecraft just right onto the internet. It's like it's like drinking from a fire hose. Yeah. Uh, to have one says, Bootis is how you say that, right? I say uh, booties. Booties? Yeah. Bootis. Bootis. Sure. Cool. Maybe. I've I like booties. Wrong. Booties is cute. Um, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. Um, do we get a mess with Play-Doh today? I almost pulled out the Play-Doh when he was talking about the voids, and I almost stretched yeah. it there. Yeah. Have you got, do, you, do you have some Play-Doh handy for this exact purpose? Yeah, I do. Um, oh, that's amazing. But I don't think it's going – I even have some stuff downstairs that I'm pretty sure might be very toxic. Uh, and <laughs> – it's, Keep it, it away from the child. Yeah, exactly. But like, yeah, I can't really demonstrate it really. It's just going to rip. But the stuff I have downstairs yeah. is called galaxy goo. 
you know, and it does the trick. <laughs> and it, and it, so it would you do, do it. you do have Galaxy Goo for doing a demonstration of voids? Uh, I, I just recently got that. So um, I was actually going to use it for for talking about that. So when you started saying that, I'm like, yep. Yeah. It's downstairs still, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that perfect. was a really good way of yeah. I was like I was looking for it and I'm like oh man I don't have it up here. But the play-doh wouldn't have, <laughs> have sufficed. Yeah, yeah. So that's all it is. Don't panic. It's just less stuff, as yeah. opposed to places where there are more stuff. Yeah. Booties. Wait, no. How's everybody pronouncing it? We're gonna have to look this up. Someone's gonna have to Google it because I I do. Probably, make I'm sure. sure it's like something really called like buote. It's like buotes or bio. Yeah. yeah. Something. Yeah, something like really some proper <laughs> fancy German pronunciation or. Latin or however, what the whatever the de definition is. Yeah, the some of the voids are huge in a way we don't understand. That's why this void is massive. I don't think they're big in a way that we don't understand. Yeah. They're just big. They're just big. Yeah. Yeah, and again, yeah, there's still stuff in them. Yeah, there's just less stuff. It's just less, and yeah. everybody just gets so super mysterious. They're you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, there are big places with not a lot of stuff. There's still. I forget, uh, like a few atoms per square cubic centimeter as opposed to hundreds of atoms per cubic centimeter. There would still be stars, galaxies in the in the great voids, just less. Yeah. Um, is silly putty not a thing anymore? Good question. I don't – I bet it is. It better but be. Newspapers aren't a thing anymore, right? So then you can't – Oh, I've seen newspapers hold. around here still. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know why that's not a thing anymore. Did you hear Sky and Telescope is going to be on the auction block? Really? Speaking of dead trees, and yeah, yeah. So it's it was sold to some conglomerate media company, and they're going to be selling it. So. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. I I, I can't afford it, but <clears throat> and I don't think I would want to run a print magazine. Thank you very much. Mm -mm. Nope. Uh, are there earth organisms that can serve, that can thrive in the Martian environment? There sure are. Um, and in fact, there was an experiment, a German experiment on the International Space Station that just released its research uh, just a couple of days ago. And it's this really cool. They had the, it was like a like a nine squares, like a tic tac toe board, right? Mm -hmm. And they had all of these little boxes in it where they would expose Martian bacteria and various Martian life forms to various different environments that were kind of like Mars and a little better and a little worse. And they found that there were actually some, some kinds of extremophiles that are good to go that are just like, send me in. Yeah. Wouldn't tardigrades NASA. be pretty okay? Well, tardigrades, no tardigrades. They want to just go to sleep. Oh, so they, well, yeah, that's they okay. They can. They're cute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They can sleep. <laughs> yeah, but the uh, but no, there's a lot of like extremophile bacteria that are and lichens and stuff that are that are ready to go, and in fact, won't even need to hibernate oh. to uh, to handle the Martian environment. So, and this is and the other part that's kind of interesting is that they have confirmed methane, the uh, European Space Agency's uh, Mars Express spacecraft, right. saw methane at this exact same spot that Curiosity did. So mm -hmm. double confirming the existence of this methane, which could be formed by life, right. could be formed by volcanic outgassing. Right. So. Which both are really cool. And this is the thing. People get – so people get pretty sad when they think, well, maybe it's not life and it's, you know, volcanic outgassing. Wouldn't that imply that it's geologically active? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, both that's super a, cool. Both is huge. Yeah. yeah. If, it's, if it is still volcanically active, very exciting – Methane on Mars, Life I have not heard this. Life would be more exciting, though. Guys, this came out before. The thing is that that's come out in combination with that. That's throwing a lot of people off. That They're going down the kind of that, that publication that happened in the Astrobiology Journal of Astrobiology, the, the mushroom one. Did you hear uh, about that? No. Uh, they're basically just rocks, but it got published in a journal. Dr. Paul and I were talking about it. Um, and everybody's like, oh, it's, it's, it's like recently. Yeah. It's kind okay. Of... I did see uh, someone saying we found life on Mars. Yeah. And I would, I just was kind of like, mm, mm. I don't think so. No. So I didn't even, so I didn't really bother digging into it any deeper. Yeah. I know it's, it's, I've had people coming in and saying like they found mushrooms and it's rocks and, yeah. um, 
yeah but the, the methane stuff we've 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 actually like as, as fraser just said we we knew about that um and this is a double confirmation of that so it's pretty yeah. cool yep. um more research necessary yeah and i mean would you be super surprised to find out that there's microbial life living you know yes subsurface on mars oh, yeah, yeah. Would, you, would you be super surprised would I be super? Yes, I would be super surprised. I'm not talking about being happy or excited. No, no, I was super surprised. My expectation is that there's no, there's, there is not, and has never been life on Mars. Hmm. That's my, that's my default. Now, of course, that's so that way. If they do find it, then I get to be delightfully wrong. Right. But uh, it just seems like it's just a terrible place, and it goes back to that idea that life is really rare. Yeah. And so it would be super weird if there was life found on Mars, meaning that life could form on two different planets. Now, there's the idea of panspermia, the life could be moving back and forth, but um, it would be quite surprising to me that life can move around inside the solar system. But it would be amazing. So, yeah. But my, but my feeling is Mars, I mean, but they now know that Mars had rivers flowing for like a billion years. Right. So the environment was there for life. Um, but it just, it just seems like it wasn't, it's not that likely, but, but who knows? Like, th I really want to go back to Titan. Yeah. You know, Titan is, I, I've been, uh, just thinking about that recently, just randomly. Titan's really, really cool. Um, um, yes, Titan. If I had, if I had to pick one place, if, if I had to choose the next mission, mm -hmm. it would absolutely be to Titan. Yeah. Same, same. Yeah. Titan helicopter, Titan submarine, Titan. Titan. Over uh, Europa. I would choose Titan over Europa. You know, I would too. Yeah. I would too. Even though Europa is really, really cool. And you know, those. Yeah. Europa is super exciting. Yeah. But it's just covered in thick ice right you know? and from what we see there's no atmosphere right no right no. so so you so the only way you're going to find that life is if you can get down into 40 kilometers of ice right while titan has liquids mixing right on the surface yep that methane ethane stuff it's uh over your rope yeah 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 absolutely Titan, Titan's really, really cool. Uh, we haven't talked about it in a long time, but Titan's really cool, guys. Yeah. I mean, it's really cold. Don't get me wrong. But... Yeah, it's really cold. <laughs> it's, it has an atmosphere that is 1.5 times as thick as Earth's atmosphere. Yeah. So you don't need a spacesuit on Titan. You definitely need a coat. You definitely need a coat. A really big coat. <laughs> and you definitely need a... Um, uh, some kind of breathing apparatus, but you don't need a spacesuit. Yeah. Uh, you could strap on a pair of wings and you could fly around on Titan with your arm power alone. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, is, pretty crazy idea. Yeah. So um, that all of the, like all of the cycles that happen on earth happen on Titan, but it's all shifted to ammonia and methane and right ethane yeah. and all these other things these liquids that are happening on on titan the the rock is made of ice yep and then on down deep inside titan it is probably has an underground water ocean just like europa and enceladus so it's the whole package yeah and that stuff could be bubbling up yeah through the through the ground through the to the bottoms of the lakes. Yeah, and you can see really cool in the top, like in the topography of it. You can see cool lakes and rivers that yeah. have been chiseled out. Yeah, I mean it it's rains insane. Liquid methane. Methane. <laughs> so, yeah, let's go. Methane rain, guys. Yeah. So uh, I, I would love to learn more about Titan. So would I. Uh, but if but the more life we find at the microbial stage, the higher likeliness we are past the great filter, right? Um, no, no. It means the more, the more life we find in the universe, the more the, the great filter is ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so in other words, it means, because, because there's, there are essentially, there's like two kinds of great filters. There's the one great filter that is say the formation of life in the first place. Another great filter might be 
going from single cell to microbial life. And, and that could be a thing that most planets never make it past. But the other one is the technological one. And so if we go and see, oh, what do you know? Life forms everywhere and yet none of it becomes intelligent. That's scary. Mm -hmm. So no, the part of the reason why finding life on Mars is it says, oh, that means the great filter is, is ahead of us. Does, does all earth life have DNA? And if so, would we expect to see that in alien life form? That's like the, the, the last two QA episodes that I did on my channel. Oh man. We're so, we're so ready Thanks. for those. Care. Destruction. Okay. I'm right. I said, we're so ready for those Q and A's. I am. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Like I said, this, 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 this one's a good one. Um, the, the, so there's this idea, right? Like, like if life formed multiple times here on earth, then could we see any kind of evidence? And so it all depends if, if like the only way you get life is through RNA, then that's weird. Right. 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 Like you would imagine that there would be almost an unlimited number of ways that like, you know, people have already demonstrated that you could have six uh, moleculed or six atomed DNA. I forget what you call it. The six, what are the, the four things in the, each string of DNA. Someone's going to know the name. Um, and, but you could do it with six, atoms as well and so even if life did form multiple times you would anticipate that that survival of the fittest would just mean that whoever was better established would eat the thing that was less established if they were compatible and if they're not compatible they could still compete because they're still competing for sunlight and telomeres there you go mm -hmm. they're still competing for resources right the sunlight and the living space and the minerals and the atmosphere and all that kind of stuff so even if they are not in any way compatible you even can't eat it you can still shade it you can still crush it under the ground right so you would expect that even if life did form multiple times that it just didn't succeed but one of the ideas is that in fact there is a shadow biosphere here on earth there's a whole other you know, it's not going to be, they're not going to be big things, but there could be a shadow biosphere of small things, microbial life that is not related to us at all. And mm -hmm. that we have, we have no standard way that we detect it. Yeah. So you can kind of imagine us at some point figuring out a way to find other kinds of life, even here on earth. Yeah. Do you think Jupiter is jealous of Saturn's way better moons? Uh, no, Jupiter has some pretty cool moons. Yeah, it's got the four Galilean, Galilean moons. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all I mean, so think, different and weird. Yeah. I mean, and Titan Titan is great, but if you, like any of the big Galilean moons would be great to explore too. Yeah. Each one of them. Ganymede. Well, Io. We can just, we can enjoy Io from afar. From afar. I wouldn't want to. Yeah. We don't need to land on, <laughs> we don't need to land on, on Io. Io. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I've asked that to a couple of, of space scientists. I'm like, should we do a mission to Io? And they're like, Nah. <laughs> nope. No. Nope. No, nope, we've Skip seen it. That one. We can see it from space. Yeah. yeah. Uh so let's see. I'm not excited of a cold poisonous ocean in the atmosphere. Uh do you believe in the possibility of life in the solar system some moon? So we were kind of going over some of that, right? Yeah. So mm, I, we don't know. We'll yeah, have maybe. Let's find out. Let's yeah. explore them. Let's find out. Yeah. And, and, and yep, that's, that's where we're at with that. And, and the thing is, like, I mean, even if we, if we do find life on Mars, then we have serious ethical issues about doing anything on Mars. True. At that point, yes. we can't even set foot on Mars without potentially contaminating it with our filthy human bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, very, very true. You know, are you okay to find life on Mars, but then to not then be able to live on it Ooh, that's a good question posed yeah because if we do we could we could ruin its environment in its current form and lose all the science that we could discover about the about the property right 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 about the about the, the various life forms so i think it's a it's i, I mean yeah so sergeant joe duck says we're human 
uh, conquered anyway. That's exactly right. So we would be like, you know, wow, we found life on Mars. Too bad for the life on Mars. <laughs> Rip life on Mars. Rip life on Mars. <laughs> yeah. I hope it likes starlings and uh, thistles because that's what we're going to bring. Maybe we need some space laws. I believe Elon Musk has kind of talked about that. Have you heard some of the stuff he said about space laws? Um, I've or I've heard him talk about it. Uh, in yeah, I, I I would I would be really interested to hear him what he feels if they do find life on Mars. Yeah, yeah. I forgot what what thing we watched on here, but he was talking about uh, how how he would govern. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. I feel like that was close to a year ago. So the information's yeah. gone, but it was interesting. I do remember that. Yeah. Um, someone's asking what our opinions are in going to grad school as opposed to getting a job out of undergrad. I haven't gone to grad school. Neither have I. I'm an undergrad. Yeah. Well, me too. <laughs> <laughs> High five. So, there you go. Um, I, I think most of our friends who are grads who are who have gone to grad school would would say it all just depends yeah right like if what you want to be is a university professor go to grad school yep if what you want to be is a researcher w working for a university go to grad school you there's no way around that that is the immutable law of grad of 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 research uh if you aren't sure about that then it's a, it's expensive and a lot of work and you don't get very well paid um it's a gamble. So my recommendation is always just learn computers, just go yes. to computer science or whatever you're going to take also take computer science. And at any point you're like, you know what? I've had enough of this grad school thing. Just go get a job with Google and make $300,000 a year. Yeah, no, I agree with that. But yeah. learning how to code, I always, it just sounds like I'm, you know, I don't know. Because we have the bias of you and I both being computer science graduates. Um, yeah, but is the, I mean, is there like a like learn to code backlash coming? Is that what you, do you feel that? I don't, I don't. Everyone should learn to code. My dog should learn to code. <laughs> I don't think there would be any backlash. It just, uh, you know, it sounds like just a statement um, in, in Twitch chat. We would say just learn to code forehead. Um, <laughs> which is just like, just go do it. You know, it makes it sound yeah. very easy, but it is, it's not too bad, especially if you can find an environment in which works for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as grad school goes, like, like he said, there's, there's certain areas where yes, you definitely should. But again, there's so many other factors that you have to account for age. It's, it is brutal, right? Yeah. Like if you want to be a, an, a professional astronomer, then you are looking at, uh, oh yeah hundreds of people trying for individual positions yes so you will end up where the work where you can get the work you will uh, spend a lot of your time trying to uh, do research grants it's tough mm -hmm. it's really tough to be a a professional research astronomer who is taken seriously right yeah no and that's one thing that i i learned when i was you know, asking before going into uh, computer science, I was asking, should I maybe go back to school for, you know, getting my my PhD in astronomy? And, and Dr. Fran Bagenal of uh, the Juno mission and also the New Horizons mission, she was like, no, 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 find something, something you can do. She's yeah. like, you're coding already. Go with that. Um, yeah. But she actually did say that, you know, if you really like talking about this stuff, it sounds like you might have something there. And then this happened. So that was kind of funny. right. And there's, I mean, there are still opportunities, right? Like you can, they're about to start dumping data from the large synoptic survey telescope and it's going to be petabytes of yep. data right onto the internet that anyone can go and dig through and discover supernovae and asteroids and comets that if you can just like connect up a bunch of big databases and do some really powerful Hadoop um, database queries, you can start making some really interesting discoveries. So I think there is a, there's a tremendous opportunity for people who are good with computers to make a meaningful contribution to astronomy and mm -hmm. the astronomers will be grateful to get your help. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, does anybody else have any questions? <clears throat> uh, trying to go see the Falcon heavy, uh, getting <laughs> admission to KSC, 
and figuring how to pay. Yeah. So I wouldn't bother. Um, <laughs> I would go to Cocoa Beach, mm -hmm. find a nice hotel with a nice beach view, sit with a Mai Tai or maybe a mojito and watch the launch from Cocoa Beach. Uh, it's great. You know, you're a, a little farther away, but it is very civilized. You don't have to try and go through all of the madness to get out to the Kennedy Space Center. And it's a great big rocket. Um, it, you'll see a beautiful view of it lifting off. You can see the rocket on the launch pad and go right up into space from, a, you know, right from the beach. So that's what I would do. I wouldn't bother trying to get into the Kennedy Space Center. And I definitely wouldn't, you know, I mean, if you can get credentials from some news agency, um, then you can get closer. But it's, I don't think it's worth the energy. Just go to Cocoa Beach. Yeah. Yeah. Or Titusville. But Titusville, you've sort of got a, it's a little closer, but you've got a, um, you've, you've, it's sort of not as nice a view directly to where the launch happens, but both of those. And, and Cocoa, Be Cocoa Beach is just so nice. So like I said, you know, I want to watch my rockets with a mojito in hand. While, right. You know, or I'm sitting on the beach, just watch it go up into space. Yeah. That's what I recommend. It's, it's amazing, like how easy it is to go and watch a rocket launch. Like all you have to do is at the time when rockets are launching, check into a hotel at Cocoa Beach, stand on your patio and watch a rocket take off. It's, it's not that complicated or expensive. Yeah. Apart from having a, you know, staying in some Airbnb and then walking down to the beach when it happens. You can watch a rocket launch. It's a, and it's, it's a life-changing experience. Have you seen a rocket launch yet? Oh yeah. Yeah. Not intentionally though, <laughs> believe it or not. I was which, younger. Which, oh, okay. But you haven't seen one recently mm -mm. when you knew what you were looking at. Yeah. No, no, I knew what I was looking at and I thought it was super cool. I was glued to the window as we were driving, but um, yeah. It, yeah, but your parents didn't even stop to let you watch a rocket launch? No. No. No, but I, I, I was like a suction cup Garfield on the window, no. so yeah, I, I watched sure. it. It was really, really cool, but I was younger. Yeah. Yeah, if it, there's like some easy bucket list things to knock off. Like, like if you're on your bucket list is I want to watch a rocket launch and you haven't like put in the energy to book a hotel and figure out a way to get out to Cocoa Beach. Yeah. You should do that because it is totally worth it. Yeah. Um, actually, Free. I think I've seen two. Apart from staying in the hotel. Yeah, no, right? I've seen two because I did insurance adjusting and in Florida and I was driving up to up the, the coast. Because I, I do remember actually seeing one where I wasn't in the car, but I don't know which one that was. Yeah. Yeah. So Papa Lito in 69 is saying I actually did that this winter, but they scrubbed the launch. Yeah. So that's yeah. the trick. You never plan your return from a rocket launch because they scrubbed the launches scrub and they pushed them back. I went to go see the shuttle launch and they scrubbed it for a month. So I couldn't see it. Yeah. Uh, I Michael. The launch pad and I saw the shuttle and I got, you know, did the whole thing, but I missed it. Yeah. Do people writing code to help astronomers decode their observations need to go to astronomy grad school? No. No. You want no, to have and, some kind of the, understanding of astronomy to a degree, right? Of what you're Yeah, kind of... and the, you can learn a lot of this just through yeah. the internet. Yeah. <laughs> like they need help badly. Yeah, there's a bunch of uh, citizen science projects. And again, with a lot of this information just being free. You know, they had the Gaia release, the, the D2 yeah. release, you know, with the LSST yeah. stuff coming out. Yeah, people, people, you could make really cool 3D um, maps of the Milky Way yeah. using the Gaia data. And people have done some really interesting simulations and stuff like that. See what it's going to look like in the future, what it's looked like in the past. There's tons of stuff. People are discovering all kinds of amazing things out of the Gaia data. And it's just knowing what to look for. Yeah, exactly. Asked earlier if Fraser thought the Cambrian explosion could be another possible great filter where a lot of life gets stuck behind never reaching those conditions. Yeah, I mean, there could be a bunch of filters as long as they are behind us. All, that's all I care about. Yeah. I want great filters that we've already gotten past. I don't want great filters that are in the beginning, in the future. Right. Behind, not ahead, guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, I think cool. that's that's about it. But thanks All right, let's for... do it. Let's wrap that up. You've, yeah. you've got some more of my content if uh, should yeah. you need. You, you've done the – so you haven't done the payloads? That You haven't done the landing on Mars one either? No, I got sick oh, okay. last week. And then the week no, before that, I had this, – this month's also kind of nuts. 
Okay. Well, there but, you go. You got some, got some fresh content. Yeah. We've got, we've got the Q&A. We've got these two uh, right here with the Guide to Space. Um, yeah. Yes. Excellent. I'm so ready right, for the well, Q&A ones, though. <laughs> <laughs> you like those? It's weird. Some people are like, I really love the QA, Q&As. They like yeah. them better. Yeah. And uh, I uh, obviously, I enjoy doing them. And they're also easy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. All yeah. right. Well, thanks so much. And guys, that's there's his link right there. Thanks, Kimpo. Um, all of his stuff. He has a great, great, awesome YouTube channel. Um, also, you can go to Universe Today. Uh, and all of that. Thank you so Sign much. Sign up for our newsletter. That's the key. Yeah. That's the best thing. The you newsletter is news. the one way that you can stay in contact with me and get a nice, handy, every week, uh, great read of all the space news that I think is interesting. So. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking Quads, the time. Ads, totally free. You'll love it. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll see you okay, next well, week. Okay. Well, thanks maybe? everyone. We'll catch up. <laughs> yeah, you can reply to the newsletter. Yeah. It's just my email. So just reply to me. Yeah. Say hi. All right. All right. See you later. See you guys later. All right. Bye.